Janelle, I've been looking for you everywhere. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, um, I'm just doing some research. Oh, well, on Eddie and Michael and uh, Paul and the rest of the guys in that. No, just on Richard. Richard? You've been doing that since Wednesday. I like to be prepared, Quincy.
Extra timers, ladies and gents. More from those guys later on. But in the meantime, let's deal with that interview. Probably the biggest interview since Moses spoke to that burning bush. The interview which revealed the ugliness of elitism, colorism, and anything with an ism in it. Because what kind of gangster baby shower reveals the skin tone instead of the sex of a child? All this to determine if Lil Archie gets the titles or not. Really? Because here's the bigger question. Who said it? Now, I know they both said it wasn't Philip, but if I was to put my money on anyone in the royal family, it would have been him. Because that's the kind of stuff he would say. Because did you know, in 1986, my man told a British student that if he stays in China any longer, he would go home with his slinty eyes. And what about Princess Michael of Kent, who racial slurs roll off the tongue and actually wore a black or more brooch when she met Meghan Markle for the first time? Now, when Meghan Markle was actually talking about the firm, I thought she was talking about this lot. Not this lot. Now, we can agree to disagree. Meghan was treated disrespectfully, and she is dual heritage. Imagine if Harry was to actually get one of the sisters and bring home from the Commonwealth. The firm would have blown their minds. Now, Oprah, she's the queen of TV interviews. Her style makes you confess to things you ain't done. And everybody knows... When a black woman asks you a question, you proceed with caution. But at least he did better than his uncle. Piers Morgan took a walk this week after he was told some home truths by his co-presenter, Alex Beresford. Now, I was proud how he articulated himself, because if that was me, I would have clarted up the place. And I've given a few chosen words from the Beijing persuasion. Alex put light-skinned people on the map. Big up the lighties. Now, I don't know anyone who was surprised that the royal family was racist. I wasn't. Not even his coast I was. Now, I'm not going to lie. A part of me is going to miss old turkey neck. <laughs> he was comedy gold. And as they say, you are the company you keep. The only person benefiting from all this is this man. Now, has anybody seen Coming to America 2? Now, I don't want to spoil the story for anybody, but, mm, but I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to watching. Judas and the Black Messiah. A story about a man assassinated by the FBI. Just another example of influential leaders being taken down by the man. Speaking of being taken out, the jury for George Floyd's case was handpicked this week. Now, me personally, I do not know why that is going to court. That's an open and shut case. The only reasons why those jurors should be meeting up is to count the number of years that murdering officer should be getting. Now, on a lighter note, Congrats to Channel 4 news anchor, Mr. Jon Snow, on the birth of his new child. When I tell you I was shocked, go on, Mr. Snow, with your Lionel Richie's self. Can you imagine in a couple of years, you and the little one would both be wearing nappies. Now that is my roundup for the week. <laughs> Okay, ladies and 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to Extra Time Fridays, the Friday night to make your lockdowns a bit more easier. It's yours truly, Cockney Prince Quincy in the building. I'm alongside my wonderful co-host, Janelle. How are you doing, Janelle? I'm very well. How are yeah. you doing? How's your week been? Do you know what? There's a lot that's happened this week, right? I, I feel like it's been a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're going to try and squeeze it in under an hour, under record-breaking time, but we're going to get all the information. Let's do that. Save my here. hearing this you time. You know what I mean? So, uh, what have we got coming up today? Well, do you know what? I'm looking forward to talking about Harry and Meghan with Eddie Nesta. Uh, yeah, in a little while. It's going to be an interesting conversation. Very. I'm going to be making chocolates with uh, Mr. Paul Gregory and Michael Botang uh, from Love Island. Lovely. And then we have actor and comedian Richard Blackwood joining us. Yes, we have. Yes, have we? Have. we? I'm, not, I'm not hating. I'm not hating. I'm not hating. <laughs> no, no, I'm looking forward to talking to Richard. Man. He's, he'll he's... be telling us all about his new project uh, and uh, latest film, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. But before we actually deal with that, uh, let's introduce our first guest. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this, um, this man, I would say, is, and I openly say this, is... Uh, one of my mentors, one of the guys I really admire and look up to, and he is successful in comedy, he's successful in raising money for funds for all kinds of charities, and he's the voice of London, and he looks like Papa Smurf as well, ladies and gentlemen. So without any further ado, right now, Mr. Eddie Nesta. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, what's going on? You're right. <laughs> At Papa Smurf. Is that where you're going to start, Chris? Come on, come on now. Look, look at you. No, I mean, no, you, know, you look good it's for you. It, like, you look good the for face you. of wisdom. You wouldn't recognise it, sir. Yeah, no, because I'm 30. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> so, look, Ed, uh, I, I want to start. Thank you for, for taking your time out and your busy schedule uh, for coming down. I, I mentioned at the top of the show, like, you are known for quite a few things. The acting, Real McCoy, we've done shows together. And obviously, you are, you are the voice of London on BBC London Drive Time, uh, which uh, most people listen to, I listen to. Um, out of all those disciplines, which one do you, would you say you take more pleasure in doing? Um, uh, the one, you always want to do the thing that you're not doing anymore, and that's acting. Uh, I'd love to be acting still, and I'm jealous of Robbie G. Uh, because, because when I go into an audition now, and they tell me they listen to my radio show, we spend about, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes talking about an issue I've covered, and then I don't get the job. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. the way, isn't it? Sorry, last question? Yeah, well, listen, you present the Drive Time show, as uh, Quincy mentioned, but I'm intrigued to know which do you find more challenging, acting or presenting? It's hard. I, I, I'll be honest with you, last night I came home and I sat um, in a room with the light off. Uh, because it, it's so weird, because in the week, you would have thought... I, I talked to Quincy on Tuesday or Wednesday, and, and this Harry and Meghan, undoubtedly the biggest story. It, it has legs, it's a story that keeps on giving, uh, but there's a story of a, a young woman called Sarah, which is ignited at London in a way that I've never seen in talking about the safety of women. And when you have story after story of women coming and telling you how it is and what they have to do, where they have to walk and all that. So, so it is challenging because you can't take it. I'm not a trained therapist or counsellor. And even they have somebody who they tell the story to um, every month or whatever. So uh, it, it's quite challenging to be able to take calls of people's trauma, if I'm honest with you. Um, as you mentioned, this week and I think this whole year, has been like story after story after story, but obviously the Meghan and the Harry has been, has been massive and it's been a, a, a ripple effect. Um, how, how, how did you view it and how important is it for you to keep neutral when it's a story like that and not putting your own personal views on it? I think we got to a, pa a, a page, you know, where actually staying silent means you're complicit in a way. And if you're doing, if, if you're reading the news, then you have to read the news. But if you're doing a show where you're taking calls and you're having conversations, and if it is about an experience, and the one conversation you can't have in this country is about race. And you can see it now because uh, uh, Gina uh, is doing awful uh, things with uh, Sharon. I don't know if you've seen Sharon Osbourne and how she's protected or said, you know, Piers is my friend and the like. And then Alex Beresford, uh, the guy. Now, in a food chain, Piers is right at the top and Alex is right at the bottom. 
right at the bottom. So for him to do what he did, you must never underestimate the kind of, I don't know, the resolve it takes to speak truth to power while you're in the belly of the beast. So that, that, that man has my admiration. But can I tell you that the part of it that I've taken from it is not the race. Because I know we can't have a conversation about race, because we know there's racism, but nobody's a racist. And the minute you try to have it, it's the way you say, I can't believe you said that to me, Eddie. Mm -hmm. And then you get the tears, and, and you never get to talk about it. So I don't bother anymore. For me personally, the idea that a, a, a guy, and remember, we're in the week of Caroline Flack, right? So this is a woman who took her own life, right? Because of mm, the tabloids. Right, yeah. And that you can sit in a studio as a man and say, this woman who said that she was near suicide is lying. So what does That's that right. mean? We're coming out of a, of a pandemic and the mental health crisis is real, you know? The anxiety that you feel, where can you go? What can you do? Quincy, I know that isn't you, but me personally, you can't even have a little... I mean, I'm married, but I could have a little rock, a little dance certain times. Man can't even dance when we come out of this thing now. <laughs> You're going to need gloves to have a little rub down now. You can't do mask to dance. You can't do... So there's an anxiety about yeah. what world, the world is going to be like when we come out of this. So you're telling me at that time, when you know a mental health crisis is going to be real, you got this muppet, Piers Morgan, telling a woman that her feelings are not real on the basis of she got in a cab and didn't check him again because she met a prince. If you meet a prince like Harry, you ain't going back to check Piers. Yeah, Piers is married. He ain't got nothing in this. So I, this is all about a, a, a man who has been hurt. His heart has been Would broken. You... But, Eddie, would you say he's been hurt or he's in his feelings? Because I would say he's in his feelings, really. I, 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 you know what I would say? Straight friend zone. You've got straight friend zone. And no man likes to be in the friend zone, you know what I mean? Especially when you really, really check for someone. He never got invited to the wedding. Listen, Quincy, <laughs> I told Mrs Nest a long time, if anybody invite me to their wedding for just the evening piece, I'm not going. <laughs> Sorry, I want to be there for the whole thing. I want to go in the morning time, stay in the hotel the night before. If they want a present from me, you got to invite me to the whole thing. If you invite me to the night time, I'm not bothering you. What were you getting? By the time you get there, everybody's half drunk anyway. They never invited him and he couldn't take it. And this is a man who was allowed by the company that he works for to go on there and to trash this human being you, on the basis of nothing. But do, do you think that ITV bosses were slow to react? Because it's not the first time he's behaved in a really quite unacceptable way. It's not the first time that right. he's uh, bullied somebody or come across as a bully. And I think there were over... Who, de who decides if it's unacceptable then? But do you know what, what, Ed, what, Ed, what I will pick up on that? I think what, what was shown this week, what Pierce Morgan did, yeah, he showed a, a ignorance and he showed a privilege, and not just from a, a, a white perspective, but from a male Highest perspective. Highest ratings yeah. they've ever had, Quincy. That's right. He went on there to turn morning uh, TV into something. He yeah. only did Monday to Wednesday. Every time I put on my phone, there was a look at the way he spoke. I can't believe that he did that. And then at another time, he was, like, he was speaking for the rights of people. When Alex spoke to him, he spoke in a way that I haven't learned how to speak yet. He spoke to him calmly. There could be no accusation but of you know, aggression uh, of anything. Me, you, I'm telling him about his BBC. Do you know, do you, do you know uh, as he says, why he's off air. Right? <laughs> but you know what really got me, and I really respected uh, Alex for that conversation, because the last black man I heard talk like that so eloquently was Lammy. You know right? But you know, but I, us, I felt the undertones what Alex really wanted yeah. to say. I mean, there's so much that we could talk about with this, and because I know Charlene felt a bit of pressure on uh, Charlene White, that is, felt a bit of pressure on loose women, and she had to keep her calm. And as the only woman of colour on the panel, when all of this was kicking off, she really had to keep calm. But I do want to come back to mm. the point about race. I know that you said, you know, that we know what it is, and we're exhausted about talking about it. But there is a really key point of the conversation, Eddie, that I want to get your thoughts on, that conversation that Harry and Meghan had, Meghan had with Oprah, and that was about how dark, or concerns about how dark Archie's skin colour might be once he was born. What are your thoughts on that, Eddie? Well, again, I don't, you know, I, I, my thoughts don't necessarily tally uh, with the majority of what I've read. So, let me tell you something, right? If you look at 
anybody's WhatsApp groups and the pages they're in. And if I have a conversation with my brother, uh, with my uncle, with my auntie, it's somebody in the family, so somebody he's related to. So he's had a conversation with them in private about this. Then he's gone and told his wife. His wife has then told it to Oprah as a weapon to be used against them. Nobody's surprised to hear uh, that the, the future king of England can't marry anybody who's had sex before, can't marry anybody who's a Roman Catholic. It doesn't surprise me. What does surprise me is that people don't think that Harry and Meghan are now, to William and the royal family, exactly the way that Meghan's father is to her. It means I can't, they can never have a conversation again. They can't have a conversation where in private they can say something uh, about it because, you know, you have to be able to have a personal conversation. Now, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm glad we know it's salacious, it's like the bold and the beautiful, the young and the reckless, it's a proper soap opera. But if, if you, when I talk to my brother, I don't expect my brother to go anywhere and tell anybody what I've said to him or my uncle, or my auntie. And I think that is going to be, uh, although I like the fact that I know it, it's going to be a problem for them going forward. So what I would say uh, to you as well, because at the end of the day, I agree with you with uh, Meghan's dad, you know what I mean, and the conversations which Harry has clearly so what's had. what's the difference then? You know what I mean? Tell well, me what's the difference, Quince? The difference between Meghan and her dad, well, her, her, her dad basically betrayed her. Her dad, because he was trying to catch up in a relationship with her, and for whatever reason, she didn't want to have that relationship at that time. And he was, he was coaxed into something, and I don't care how naive he could have he been. He revealed he, their personal that's business. That's right, he challenged business, so he, he deserves everything he gets. I agree with you, he deserves everything he gets. But going back to that, and that involves with the press, my, my, my question to you is, you work for a popular radio station, you could say you are part of that, 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 that mantra, that, that industry. So there are stories and there are times where you're going to deal with people who you possibly work with. You worked with one of them, yeah? So, would you say the British press is racist? Yeah. All right, you and next to question? Give you, long, <laughs> you want me to give you a long... You no, want me no. to give it... Charlene called out the editors. So at the end of that thing, mm. uh, the, the head of the Editors Association claimed that the British press was not racist, OK? So Charlene pulled out of their thing. He had, then had to retract it, and now he's had to resign. We've seen it in football with Raheem Sterling yeah. and Foden. The white guy bought a house for his mum. Isn't it wonderful? Look how generous he is. Sterling did it, and they said, look at the flash so-and-so, look what that's he's right. done. Mm -hmm. It's there for you. See, absolutely, yes. That's the answer, yes. So, t so talking of that then, on the subject of the press being racist, of course the royal family are in a really awkward situation. Some might agree with your point of view in that, uh, you know, some private conversations have been revealed, placing them in a really awkward situation. Um, but William was at a school in East London yesterday, in your neck of the woods. Yeah, my man, I, I, I had to throw away a couple of... Anyway, he's moving. <laughs> who, who, was the, who was the queen next to him? That was the... Uh, she was the head teacher. The Wakanda. Oh, yeah, she was the, the, the lady of African outfit. I reckon. Have you noticed how many, how many, so, have you noticed how many black people in the royal family have been around? When Charles was somewhere, there were two, there were two black men, big old black men, and then when he was there, I was like, whoa, somebody in PR is trying to rock this thing. Yeah, and you know the joke thing about it, yeah, because they know about these uh, 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 people coming for the longest while. So that head teacher must be sitting there thinking, of all the weeks you come to my school, you come <laughs> this week, I'm going to deliberately find a, 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 a cloth. She chose her outfit very well. She chose well. it. Yeah, she, she chose it. Oh, she, she did well. And the PR people said, I don't want you to go anywhere with any red skin, brown skin, yellow skin. They've got to be dark. So we've got to show that we ain't got no prejudice. <laughs> but, but, you know, on a serious point, he did actually say that his family are not racist. So with that in mind, Eddie, what do you think the next move for the Royals should be? First of all, it's very unusual for them to answer questions like that. So that's, that, in a way, for me, that's the real story. They get questions that shattered at them all the time. Surely the real story would have been it if he had said, yeah, yeah, we are racist. Yeah, right? know, yeah. So clearly, <laughs> clearly, he's not going to say that. You're going to say, right? you know what, you've got a point, yeah. You're going to say it, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. 
I, I, don't, I don't want to say to Harry and Meghan, boy, taking on the royal family is like going up against, I don't know, the Vatican, the Mafia. They call themselves a firm. When you go up against the royal family, you're going up against the Queen. When you go up against the Queen, uh, you're going up against your country. That's defined as a form of treachery, treason. I think we're in a moment where it's going to be difficult to see how they move on. They're very rich. They're going to be OK. I, I'm, I'm glad. I, I, I think it was an interview done out of anger. And in my life, I've learned never to do anything out of anger. I think it's going to be difficult now. Yeah, look, I was just going to say this. Um, I said this on my radio show, yeah. Them man there, they're done out here. That's all I wait there. I'll show, show you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't, there isn't a, a, a PR company would touch the Windsors for a mile. Look. Just to let you know. Plug it. Oh, oh fantastic. <laughs> well done. What well do done, Quince. Thank you for your support. Thank do, you. Do, do you right. know what, actually? I've got it from the... Anyway. Where, go on, where'd you get it from? Because I uh, want one. Back in glory. He didn't even give me one. But do you know what? You, Curtis Walker, and your lovely boss lady wife, Lisa, and a host of other guests, actually, have... Um, Done no joke uh, every Sunday up until recently where the series came to an end. It's a knockout series. I really miss it. I know we've really been missing you it. it. You got but you've got some good news for us, Eddie, so I hear. Yeah, um, we're going to come back on the 21st, uh, the 21st of March, which is next Sunday. Well, and that right. will be <laughs> two... Yes, <laughs> thank you. It will be two days before the year. So... The 23rd of March, Monday the 23rd of March, it was at 8.30, the Prime Minister came and addressed the nation and said we were going into lockdown. So it will be really interesting to analyse, scrutinise uh, where we've been. 130,000 people have died, yet we've got the largest rollout of the vaccine in the entire world. All of us will have had stories, maybe lost people, whatever. So it will really be a moment to, to, to just take stock, you know what I mean? Yeah, look. Eddie, I appreciate you taking your time out. I know you're a busy man. Uh, I've been looking forward to watching the show when it comes back on the 21st. I'll be rocking my T-shirt. I'm actually going to be a gentleman. I'm going to give this to um, Janelle. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, the and, producer... And it's, too big, it's, too, it's too big for you, Janelle. That's Quincy's size. It is too big for no, you. No, it's actually... It's, you know, it's actually uh, our, our producer's Nick, so he, bought, he, he actually bought it. Can I just it. say, Eddie, I'll can you see it. this? He's trying to give me his cast-offs, not even to say... I haven't put it on yet. <laughs> so he's telling me it's still worth money. I ain't put it on. He ain't got my DNA in it. No, relax, man, relax. <laughs> Eddie, thank you so much for taking God time out. Uh, I know it's past you. your bedtime. So say hello to Smurfette and uh, Grumpy Smurf. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of them, right? <laughs> Take, care. Take it easy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Eddie Nestor, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of London. Uh, listen, I, I love that brother, man. He's, 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 he's a don. He's a don. Amazing guest, you know, like such a pleasure to have him on. But listen, right now, we are winging it over to the culture corner. I thought I was lost but ironically found myself in the depths of the darkness. Fumbling around in the dark, I felt the handle of the door and pushed it open, feeling the catharsis. Even with my eyes closed, I can see the sparks flying. I have no limits. Possibilities are endless, you can't tell me I'm finished. I will keep pushing forward until your tortured noise is diminished. Don't mistake this for arrogance. It's called confidence. This is exactly what I envisaged. Show business is tough. First you're a hot shot, then forgotten about in minutes. It's up to you to keep it fresh. Fuck the critics trying to hang shit reviews around your neck. Your character assassination will not affect my checks because I know who I am, authentic to the bone. The soul of a punk, I'll flip you the finger whilst eating ice cream cones. I'm a oxymoron, I'm awfully good. I'm a serious joke, I'm suburb, I'm hood. Through my depression, I found love for my art and that's priceless. Like a pinball machine, I'm pinging everywhere using my creative life, something that can never be revoked. You can't steal this from me, you can't touch it, so don't approach. I've learnt the power of saying no. I bask in the freedom of letting shit go. Living like an elephant, I don't forget. I remember all the compliments, the good guys, and I definitely remember the bad. It's sad, people take joy from bringing people down. A reflection of their own insecurities, glorified clowns. I thought I was lost, but ironically found myself in the depths of the darkness. Fumbling around in the dark, I felt the handle of the door and pushed it open, feeling the catharsis. I'm happy, 
It's been such a long time And all I want to do is help people through the fog and expose the sunshine I thought the light was from an oncoming train But it really was the end of the tunnel I'm here to give you strength, you don't have to crumble Not preaching, not claiming to have all the answers But you gotta believe change comes from these chances If I can do it, anybody can Time is of the essence, I said Time is of the essence, it's of the essence So let's just be present and enjoy your ascent into greatness feeling weightless digging deep we can all be courageous the magnificent sarah callahan there everybody now remember you too can appear in culture corner all you need to do is drop us a message tell us why the details should be on the screen right now and you know if we like what we hear from you then you'll be in the culture corner yourself but right now over to you quincy Thank you very much, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, look, um, we are here and I really appreciate you know, taking your time out. Uh, as you can see in front of us, we have some items, some items we make you put on weight, but put on weight with a smile on your face. Uh, and I in introduce a round of applause to Mr. Paul Gregory, our chocolatier in the building. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So look, uh, Paul, yep. uh, thank you for taking your time out. Like I said to all my okay. guests, but uh, I really appreciate you coming out and showing us how to, how to make chocolate and tell us a bit about chocolate. But before we do that, mm. you are a chocolatier. Explain okay. to the viewers mm -hmm. what exactly a chocolatier is. Ooh, a chocolatier is the next stage on from being a pastry chef, really. So you become a pastry chef or yeah. baker, pastry chef, and then a chocolatier. So, uh, so you are a next place from a pastry chef. Yes. Move really? up, step on. A step on. Yeah. So it's so it pastry chef, chocolatier. Yes. And then... Master. Chocolate and the Charlie chocolate. The yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, no, I think, yeah. Right, and the Diggy Bird told me that you actually are an ambassador as well. So what, what does the mm. role of ambassador play okay. in your industry? So as an ambassador, uh, you work for one of the big companies and you yeah. go and represent that company. Um, but I'm not ambassador for that company anymore. Um, but that was about five years ago. So I would go around the world. Like oh, this. yeah, I can see you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which one are you? Oh yeah, there you oh, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any black guy? The only one. It's like, a royal, <laughs> like, a, it's like a royal family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we have you, our chief. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> so no, that's that's wonderful, man. I can see yeah. all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much. You imagine if that was a bit more pointed, it'd be a, a different meeting. Yeah, dude. Anyway. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, uh, like, I invited you here, but relax, relax, relax. <laughs> I know you haven't got all your tools and all that. You're yeah. missing the scissors. So you, you, you can't find the scissors, can you? Yeah, there's a scissors. It's a scissors song, mate. Yeah, I mean, we'll find it. We'll find it. All right, nice. So let's, like, let's make some chocolate. Okay. So are you going to show me how to make this uh, yeah. truffles or something? Is... That's it. So this is gingerbread truffle. This is a new chocolate. It doesn't come out until next week. So maybe real gingerbread. Okay. Yeah, see, so Real so gingerbread. This is, no, this is... Uh, yeah. So that's, a, that's the mix. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to fill up the and shells. So why, why, why are you doing that? Didn't you make some chocolate for a famous uh, Love Island contestant? Oh, <laughs> yeah. For Michael Botang, yeah. Michael like Botang, yeah? Yeah, for his girlfriend. Well, for Valentine's you know Day. What? Funny enough, right? Because yeah. um, I'm like the, the black Eamon Andrews, uh, yeah, right? yeah. for all the younger viewers. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's, on, he's, on, he's on the old dog and bone right really? now. So give him a round of applause. Really? <laughs> Botang, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, really, really, really. What's he been doing? Yo, what's good? Oh, what's going on, blood? <laughs> what's going on, mate? What's going on? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm oh, good, bruv. Good to right, see you. You look, you look well, you look well. If you close on, because I normally see you close off for some strange reason. <laughs> yeah, no, I got my clothes on. I got my clothes on today. I'll, I'll come good. I'll come prepared. All right, that's all good. That's all good. So, so look, Paul is going to uh, show me uh, to make these chocolates. And obviously, you two have both met. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, you made chocolates for his... He's got, for his yeah. girlfriend. You made chocolates for his partner, right? Yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so look. But it's his recipe. He, 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 it was to his taste. He told me what to make, and I made it. To his taste. Yeah, you, you, you got a name, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the chocolate was, like, straight from the motherland. The well, every, everything I believe was from the motherland. <laughs> All right, then. You said that in Love Island, but anyway, yeah, that's another yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, while, while, while um, Paul was going to show me how to date, um, make the chocolates, mm -hmm. you are going to introduce you to my wonderful co-host, Janelle Rayburn. So, Janelle, Michael, Michael, Janelle, do your thing. Hey, Janelle. Hey, Michael. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm good, thank you. Listen, while Quincy and Paul are getting on with making the chocolates, um, you were in season six 
of Love Island. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Love Island is a, has been a massive <laughs> success, a really popular show. So tell us what that was like and tell us what it was really like. Oh boy, Love Island. It was a, it was a mad experience because obviously it's like something that I had never done before, but we've all watched and everybody kind of grew to love and have such like an affinity with the show. So going into it, I was, I was, uh, I was nervous. I'm not gonna lie, but um, it was, it was one of them weird and wonderful experiences that, even though it was tough, if I had the chance to do it all again, I definitely would. That's interesting, and I'm sure you would because actually, out of it, you met your lovely fiance Priscilla. So that's 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 a bonus, oh, right? God sake. Let's reel it back. Let's, let's producer. Reel it back. I'm not yet. <laughs> all right. I'm not yet. <laughs> I'm only going by my cue card. Okay, Name me the cue card. But for now, she's, um, she's my girlfriend. And by God's grace, we've made it over a year together since <laughs> the show, so we're still going to Okay. All right. Well, listen, uh, Michael, you hey, all. Coming out. <laughs> he's stuck in the head coming out. He's on, he's on two. He's on two. <laughs> two. Two. He's making a right pig's ear of that over there. Oh, there you go, look, look. Listen, I want to eat those. You better, you better do a good job, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, listen, Michael. So you have a, a promotions company called MKB ah. Promotions, right? Tell us a bit about that. What do you do? Yeah, so um, when I came out of Love Island, obviously, I'd, I was just thinking to myself, what kind of things am I passionate about? What do I want to do? Um, so I started MKB Promotions just as almost like a, a model to what Tyler Perry and some of the other greats that they've got going on out there. And I just want, kind of wanted to emulate that and set up something on my own in the UK to kind of create content um, from like a black and ethnic minority like, point of view. So I started up my own company to kind of just create films, TV shows, be right as well. So that was kind of the reasoning behind why I started MKB Promotions. That sounds fantastic. And you actually have a film coming out soon, I believe, called The Outcome. Uh, tell us what it's about. Oh, dear. <laughs> he has to bring the tone down every week, guys. <laughs> All right, let's talk about your film. While Quincy cleans himself up, let's talk about your film, The Outcome. Uh, tell us what it's about and when can we expect to see it? Yes, yeah, so I've been working hard and the team have been working hard on my film, The Outcome which hopefully, God willing, is coming out next month. Um, the film essentially is about a, a relationship and decision making. And all, ultimately, um, it's about perspective. And, you know, everybody's going to watch the film and, and depending on your own views, you can ultimately decide what you think happens after you've watched the film. So it's, it's kind of like a weird and wonderful end. And the, the, the decision is placed on the viewers. So you guys will be able to decide for yourself what you feel is right or wrong and how you feel you would have gone on if that kind of makes sense without spoiling it too much. That's, that's really exciting. And when did you say that we can see it? Um, so <laughs> post-production has been tough. So we haven't actually set a date yet, but most definitely next month you'll, you will see the film. So by the end of April, um, God willing, the film will be out. Oh, fantastic. So, listen, from Love Island to acting, how did you find that? It's, it's been tough, but I'm not going to lie, there was a lot of points in Love Island where I, I had to act. <laughs> so, so, so you guys have already seen a bit of the skills and now it's just turning it into a, a different format. <laughs> so it's all good. All right, let's see how Quincy and Paul are getting on. Uh, do you know, I'm not going to lie to you, right? Do you know, like, you go to the toilet and you ain't got enough toilet roll? That's oh <laughs> <laughs> how my hair looks right now. Uh, I, <laughs> Michael, how do you do this thing, man? Because this is hard. How did you, like, put the thing, like... I tried, I tried my best. I tried my best. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. No, now he shows me the gloves. Look, yeah, so look. Cool. You know, I, I, I did show you, but you know. No, but my, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, he's a don. Uh, Paul's a donner at this kind of things. So, like, um. We're gonna finish this off now. So, you've done the rolling side of it. You've done the rolling side of this, right? Yeah, he, yeah. He, yeah, he did the whole thing. He did All right, so, like, while, while, while we're doing that, I yeah. just wanna ask you, mm -hmm. uh, Michael, um, obviously, Janelle tried to marry you off. 
Yeah, but it's clearly not that that, that, that case. <laughs> that case. Well, how, how, not ready yet. Yeah, no, no. Not ready yet. That's good. Keep it that way. Keep 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 your money in your pocket. Like, has um, <laughs> how has life treated you after Love Island? Like, have, have you have you been like, is it still that case, or have you still get recognised when you're on the road and you get a discount from certain shops? Yeah, no, it's 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 been weird. It's been weird because obviously I came from obscurity, and then obviously now, anytime I go to the shops and stuff, people do recognise me. There was a there was a time where I was in Tesco's, and a man came up to me and he was like, "Yo." I just came out of prison, but I was watching your team. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's fun. That kind of recognition, I'm still not used to it, but, you know, we're, we're there. We're there. Yeah, I, I feel that, man. It's like sometimes when I do the radio and people ask me on the road, they say to you, do you know what, your, your show's got me through um, doing the time. And I was like, OK, I was playing slow jam, so I don't know what kind of cell you was in. But anyway, that's <laughs> another It's mad. So, look, look as, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing. Um, you have got one which you have done earlier on, right? Yes, that's correct. I've got it right next yeah. to me as well. All right, so look, what we're going to do, before we, uh, I, I, I put my finishing product to... Uh, my man's rolling. Oh, calm down. Why is it just yeah, I've, got, I've got to go through this, you know? OK, fair <laughs> enough. So, look, you're going to taste yours very soon, right? And um, I'm going to put mine over. Have you got a finished one? Because this is, this is long. <laughs> yeah, some finished ones here. We don't I tell know. you, if I was if I was a chocolatier, right, there'd be bare people with food poisoning with me because I would just half do this. I'm not gonna lie to you. All right. So look, um, show you some. Yeah, yeah just just show us uh, what one we done earlier, and then we're gonna ask Michael to taste his, uh, which we done. Mm -hmm. Well, you done. I didn't do it. Yeah. Paul done it, Michael. I didn't do it. Yeah, because I don't want that responsibility. Paul done it. That's cool. That's cool. If, if Paul done it, I trust him. All right, good. <laughs> Thank now, you, bro. But on the real, on the real, I was saying, Respect to the to the film and, and doing that kind of stuff, man. I, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. But you know what I mean. We're proud of you for doing that. So look, let's take it over. This is what we done earlier on. Yeah, I finish this off. Yeah. I and mean, you finish that off, and yeah. and I'm gonna walk over. You come with me, walk over. Yes, exactly. Janelle, you want to take some of this? Give me the whole lot. Just give that to me. There you go, sweetheart. I mean, you kind of put me off a little bit with your shenanigans well, over there. But do you know what? <laughs> Nothing can really put me off chocolate. Right, you can have a go? Yeah, have, have a taste, have a taste. You have a taste, Mike. I'll have a taste of your, your one. See what you think. Can I go? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And... All right, cool. Gingerbread. Mm. Oh. All right. Mm. What, what does the texture taste like on the tongue? You know, you should ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you bite into it, you are, I was expecting it to be hard, but it's soft and it's like creamy. It's, it's, it's heaven. It's delicious. It's right, isn't it? You know what? It's wonderful. No, you're right. I know the man made them. <laughs> That's not a good no. sign, Paul, man, from a man making it. You know what he does? That's a good, like, <laughs> not a good it's, sign. It's yeah. very, like you said, it's very creamy, a bit velvety. Mm. Um, you can taste the little kick of ginger, but it's not too overpowering. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's good. Yeah, I can right. taste the ginger, man. It's good, to, it's good, it's good for COVID. Oh, mine. <laughs> all right, Michael, uh, I appreciate you taking your time out, my friend. I wish you all the success in all your businesses all right, and good luck with the film. You know what I mean? And make, make sure you, you make plenty, plenty more. All right? Anything you want to say? Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you for having me. And also, let me just say as well, before I let you go, I didn't even like chocolate before I met Paul. <laughs> oh, and then he introduced me yeah. to him. So I was like, yo. <laughs> so, yeah, nah, thank you guys. Paul. Keep doing your thing, man. Thank you, bro. Right, Michael. Thank you, bro. Give a round of applause for Michael Botang, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, I've been trying to um, un unloose this thing here for the longest while. What is it? To try and clean my hands. It's some kind of thing before I bring in our, our last guest, yeah? So do you know what? Do you want to, as you were researching him for the longest while, <laughs> do you want to <laughs> introduce him while I clean up my hands? Are you all right to stay, Paul? Yeah, I'll stay, I'll stay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, sh you should be familiar with this next guy. Yeah, it's yeah. actually a friend of yours, isn't it? Really, who's this? Well, it's actually my great pleasure to introduce the one, the only, Mr. Richard Blackwood, everyone. <laughs> Richard! What me, all right? Uh. What, what me? You good? <laughs> 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 Is now, Richard, <laughs> Richard, Richard. Yes, no. Where? First of all, can I say what? I'm Paul. Can I say hello to Paul? Of me course and Paul you can. Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 he's saying. What's going on, brother? 
Hey, so everything and nothing, you know it, go. Yeah, that go. It's been, it's been a minute still. For the non-Jamaicans, he was basically saying, um, good evening, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, you see, you see, you know, it's really funny because you see Paul there and he's all eloquent and he's all nice, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Paul was a little bad man back in the day when we was growing up, you know, like Paul, right? When we were like teenagers, Paul was a couple of years older than me. Paul used to have this big dog. What was it? A Rockweiler? Did you used to have Pitbull. Was it a Rockweiler? American Pitbull. Pitbull. Oh, uh, original. That's it. He used yeah. to have it. Original. original. And he used to have this Pitbull. He used to go to Stratton Fair, right? And we would walk with this Pitbull. Nobody in the ends of Stratton used to mess with Paul. Paul is all nice and making chocolates and stuff. <laughs> Paul back in the day was a serious dude. i am just let you know. Right? So it's, lo it's lovely to see Paul. <laughs> you know it's what? Nice. I'm quite nice. surprised nice. you said that about the Pitbull because that's what we had the chocolates out of. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Paul, I just wanted to say that. No, it's good good love, to see you, we got back you. over 30 odd years, man. So it's good to see you, bro. But, yeah. Uh, that was about 40 years, you know, bro. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, shall we give it a yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give yeah, it away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've left my, my cue card, so you. Don't give it away to the viewers. Yeah. Your, your age. Preserve that. That's good, that's true. It's all in the chocolate, right? There you go. Now, listen, Richard, back to you. So, just like uh -huh. uh, the guest that we had on earlier, Eddie, you've literally you've done it all. You've done acting, you've done stand up, you've done presenting, and also this. You can't do it. On the silver screen, I'm gonna get up in it in a minute. It ain't about a beamer or the bins. I wanna raise the UK flag like loose ends. What? What you say? So, what you say? Richard, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I enjoyed that. I watched that video like it was uh, coming to America too. You know what I mean? It was a good sort of good <laughs> No, but listen, <laughs> do you, one, one of the things I love about you is that obviously you've done your singing, you know what I mean? You, you, comedian, which, which I know you from as well, and you've gone into acting. Of so I, which one I, I want to say to you is, out of the disciplines, which one of them gives you most pleasure? Stand up. Um, mm. I, don't get me wrong, I love acting with a passion, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to, to be acting on, you know, Hollyoaks and other stuff like typical that you, that you came to see and stuff. But there is, there is something about stand-up, and I'm, Quincy, you know as a comedian, th there is, I've never smoked, I don't drink, so I'm not used to any other youth form of euphoria in terms of a high. But I challenge anybody to be the high of an audience dropping dead at your laughter, a, a joke that you wrote, created, and you yeah, performed. Yeah, that there is, cool. you remember like yeah. performing at Hackney Empire, because mm -hmm. of the, the way the stage was and the, the way that, that, that the sound and everything, the acoustics, when you dropped a big joke in Hackney Empire and the roar would kind of, it, it could literally push you back. Do you know what I mean? It was so intense. That feeling, I think is, far superior to none so i would always say stand up and also because people we make stand up look easy yeah and we know how hard it is <laughs> you know like you can train and become a great actor but you have to have something else within you to be a great stand up i think and i and I, and I would i would tend to agree with that i think to be a stand up especially what we do um you have to have personality mm. i think as an actor you know i mean there, there are great actors and great performances but you are taking on another persona and us as we are on our stage, yeah. we are our raw self. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't listened yeah. to one bit of this, of this script. <laughs> <laughs> but really? Cut really? me in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? To be able to... I, I've got the utmost respect for stand-up comedians because to be able to get up there, improvise, and leave yourself exposed to, um, hopefully, laughter, um, but sometimes it doesn't always mm -hmm. go that way with a lot of comedians, is great. But I do want to talk yeah. about your acting because you've just turned your one-man play typical into yeah. a mm -hmm. film. Um, and that's about the tragic death of Christopher Alder in police custody. Now, I'm really interested mm -hmm. to know, what drew you to that role? Do you know what? I went into it naively. I, I, like, um, 
I was all, they, they came to my agent and said, we want Richard to audition. And I was familiar with the, the case, because I'm old enough to remember it. I remember seeing it on the news. Um, but I didn't know how deep the piece was, how intricate it was, how melodic, and then at the same time, how un unorthodox it was in terms of its writing. Um, Ryan played no games in terms of the way he wrote this play. So, and I'm glad that I came into it with a naive perspective because I think like some of the other people that auditioned, they came in knowing and it threw them off because it was a challenging piece to do. It's extremely hard. And I just kind of went in blind, did enough to get the role. And then I was committed and I'm a Taurus, I'm a bull. So, you know, once we're fixed on something, that's just, that's just it. So I was determined to win. And ultimately as it grew, I think for me, I, I realized it's, you know, you're telling the story of a man that was killed, basically. So you have to play the truth of that. It's Angela Mar came to see it. And she said, she goes, this is not just a play. She goes, you've had to play somebody that was murdered. This is fresh. It wasn't years and years ago. You know, there was no, this is not a Hollywood kind of like, this is real, raw kind of, you know what I'm saying? And you've got to take the audience down this road with him. And at the end of it, they've got to believe that they, that was their friend. Hang on, but Rich, hang on one lost. second. Just uh, for those who don't know, tell us uh, a bit about Christopher and uh, uh, and the, okay. uh, the background of the story. Well, Christopher, uh, he was um, an ex uh, uh, paratrooper, not even a soldier. He was a paratrooper. He was like the high top end of that elite squad, um, and he was from Hull. And basically, one night he went out, um, got into an altercation at a club. And then literally when he was taken to the hospital, it kind of started there where the police came and harassed him there. And he was trying to explain that, you know, that he basically was severe, he was concussed. So he wasn't meant to leave. They were telling him basically to get out or they was gonna arrest him. They arrested him. And then obviously we know what they did to him in that van. And then the video basically shows him on the floor choking to death for eight or nine minutes before mm. he died and they're just watching and stepping over him making yeah. monkey noises all kinds of things um and it was and they got off basically the police that did it so you know we we felt it was very important to as i say un unfortunately when you hear about cases like this whether it, whether it prior to george floyd you always saw a video and then you would hear somebody say but what did he do to bring this situation on what happened just before the video it was it's always a rationale and then if you even think about it with george floyd they then said oh but you did know he was a criminal like it's a reason to kill someone yeah. do you know what i mean like well he had a checkered past but this so, is and it's like this is the thing for me no, I'm sorry. is um you playing that role i had the pleasure of watching it and and it was like i didn't see richard i did see christopher you know, as they were saying, yeah. and, uh, and, yeah. and we know the story to the point of how he was murdered, but obviously there's been other tragedies with the family of now, last year, we're finding out that the family buried the wrong body and, and the, we, yes. and the yes. police and the, the coroners are, are trying to pass the buck. So with all that knowledge, with all that information, I mean, how more now they're doing the film is it important for you to basically really take hold of that role and make that family proud? Well, I tell you something, I, I, I've only told a couple of people this. Uh, when I performed it, because we was pe performing at the Edinburgh Fringe for a month and then we took it to the Soho Theatre where, where you came to see it. Yeah. And, um, and there was one performance that I did, and this might sound surreal, it might sound crazy, I don't know how it will sound, but it's truth. So at the end, I'm laying, I'm laying on this, the boxes, and this is just as they show the video, and then it shows me, you know, obviously passed away now on the boxes. And I got so into the performance, like sometimes I would cry just before he would pass, and that would be a natural thing which helped with the scene. So anyway, I was laying there, and my eyes are closed, and it felt as if he stood over me and said, thank you. It was such a weird 
and 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 the weirdest thing it sounds mad and there, there are people that are not that don't believe in god or not religious whatever mm. that will go yeah that's nonsense but i'm telling you i felt his presence mm. and it was as if he was saying thank you and then um and then when his sister came his sister came to the final performance on the final night and you know by this point i had performed it millions of times so i knew it like the back of my hand but it was the first time in a long time i was highly nervous because i realized she has to everybody else they're just seeing this stranger go through this situation but there's a cutoff because it's somebody they don't know this is his sister so i've got to reenact playing her brother and then play this very horrible scene of him being beaten up in the van and then him dying you know because we saw the video but we never saw what occurred to get into that point so now i'm reenacting that part um, and I, and I, I remember where she was sitting and I'm trying not to look over there as I'm playing this scene. And I just thought, oh God, like I, I'm, I'm at crossroads because I don't want to take away from the scene. I've got to make it as horrible as possible because the message needs to be driven home. But at the same time, I'm aware that the more, the hor more horrible it is, the worse it is for her to have to sit through that. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, oh, I, I wouldn't want to relive that. However, Afterwards, she hugged me and she said, you, she goes, for, you wasn't able to research him because there was no videos or anything on him that they had. And she said, you had my brother down to a T. She goes, he was, it was very funny. She goes, the way you played him, she goes, I'm telling you, that was him. Do you, do you know me, what, Rich, Rich, I just want to come yeah. in there because actually, um, you know, and we give our condolences out to yeah, the yeah, older yeah. family um, yeah. and also anybody else who has lost um, a loved one in police custody or after they've come in contact with the police. But I just want to give a stat there just to really put it into context. Since 1990, mm -hmm. there have been 1,700 deaths in the UK either in police custody or after somebody has come into contact with the police. Now, that is shocking by any standards. I mean, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's, it's a horrible statistic because, you know, we hear those numbers and nine times out of ten, we don't know any of those people. So we're able to, to sort of kind of go, oh, that's a shame. But that's 1,700 families you know, that, that are affected by this. And, you know, I, I, you know, I don't want to bring down the tone, but I lost my mum December of cancer. And so a loss of somebody in your family is hard as it is. But for me, at least I know my mum, even though cancer is a horrible thing, it wasn't somebody that came and took her life, if that made sense. Or, you know, um, we've accepted cancer as one of those diseases that does that, but it's a process and it gives you time to get used to the fact that soon this person is no longer going to be here. But to know that somebody was killed by the people that are supposed to protect us, I don't know if you can ever come to peace with that. Does it make sense? But this is... And, and, and that... Go on. No, I was just saying, as, as, you, as you talk about that, but what, you're, what you've done and what you're doing is you're not just speaking for Christopher, you're speaking for those 1,700 people as well. Um, yeah. Who, who, have, who, have, who have been been taken, all right? And that has led to you now, um, you, you, the other acting roles. You know what I mean? Hollyoaks. Mm-hmm. You know Hollyoaks, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I didn't have to audition for that. Yeah, and that's on the power of of, of doing the play. You know, I mean, the movie. So look, here's the question, right? And I'm changing up a little bit as we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In every mm -hmm. kind of soap I've seen you in, the two the two major ones I've seen you in, the opening scene. You've basically got hold of the fittest burden. <laughs> did you write? Did you write in the script? Yes, yes, yes. Did you write in the script? Did you say no? I don't need to church. <laughs> Do you know what? Right. <laughs> let me tell you something. That's really great. First of all, I appreciate that. But let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to say that I appreciate that you noticed that. That because that's part of the writer. Yeah. But, um, but, <laughs> but, but no, you know what it is. Okay. When I got to EastEnders, mm. I knew that I was playing Tamika's partner. And obviously me and Tamika, you know, we know Tamika for what day, we've known go back yeah. 20 plus years. So, I, so that was, it was, it was a lovely union because it, it, it and, and Tamika really schooled me because, you know, Tamika's had that real acting experience. So she would, she would really hone me in and pull me aside and say, don't do that, do it this way and blah, blah. So, you know, I, I give her a lot of credit for helping me 
choose the right acting choices, you know, and learning how to do this thing properly. Um, but I remember in the meeting, they said, you're going to have to have another woman in the show. There's got to be a conflict, blah, blah. And I remember they, there was a board of women on the show, and they said, so which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I, I am not making this up. And I said, I think I'm, I think I'm going to go with this one right here. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny. <laughs> you know what? No. You know what it was like? It was like, it was like, you know, Enter the Dragon. Yeah, yeah. I'll take you. And this is you? I'll you. take you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but it's, I thought he was joking. And he goes, I'm, he goes, I'm being dead serious. You've got to choose which one. And I was like, hey, you know something? Why, why are we here? I, was, I think this one would be all right. right? Yeah. So then, so, and then like, and then obviously now coming on to Hollyoaks, Kelly, right? Kelly is stunning. And Kelly, I've known Kelly once again from Eternal for, it's her birthday today actually, but I've known Kelly for 20 plus, 20 came, Kelly came to my son's christening. My son is 20 now, right? You know, so we go back yeah. that far. Kelly's so from my manner. Kelly She's from my manner. Is she from your end? Yeah, yeah of course she is. Yeah, of course she is. Yeah, 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 of course she is. Right? So, you know, Kelly and I, it, it actually feels like we're a, part, we're, we're a couple anyway. And then Tamara, who is also the love interest on the show, Tamara is like, you know, when I told my friend I was doing the show and I, and I said, I think they're going to hook me up with Tamara, who plays Grace Black, my friend was like, Grace Black? She goes, she's, that's, that's the top woman on the show. Right? And I was like, yeah, well, you know, that's, that's my thing right there. Right? So, like, um, <laughs> So, you know, it was, so I guess it kind of, it helps me because it kind of pushes me as this, I don't know, I don't know what the right word is, but it, yeah, it's good. <laughs> I can't complain. Well, Richard, it's been absolutely fantastic. Such a pleasure having can you I, on. Can I just say, Rich, yeah. I wouldn't be the person I am. I've noticed your bed sheets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You cannot afford to piss the bed. <laughs> I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that to, to be what you was going to say. But, <laughs> you know, you know, if, you spill, things, if you spill, if you spill anything on that, and, did I, did I, yeah, I don't think you, you understand. Look, no, no, go to the wide again, go to the wide again of the room. You notice that everything is immaculate in its place. I only come in here to sleep. I don't play around, you know. No, no, really? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm a, I've got OCD, so everything is always in, in immaculate anyway, right? Do you know what I mean? But I don't mess up. These, these sheets hardly get moved. I sleep <laughs> on this side of the bed, the other side. I don't, you see this side of the bed here? You see this side here? This side here don't even need tidying. I sleep this side. That's yeah. it. I'd be, too, I'd be too scared to, to wrap myself up in that, in that, just in case I have a nightmare and I rip it. I'll be crying. <laughs> Yeah, no, and like, you're big and strong. You can't, there's a spare room. You can stay in that room. There's, there's, you're not staying. So listen, before we let you go, um, mm -hmm. what is next for you, Richard? What's yeah. coming up? Do you know what? Right, right now, it, it's Hollyoaks. I mean, like, um, Hollyoaks, I've been here for a year now. So, you know, I'm based up in Liverpool now. I'm not even in South London no more. All right, so, Paul, you've got to hold it up for me down there. But mm -hmm. um, no, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> No, no, I'm in a Stratton, man, yeah, SW16, yeah, no, no, no. right? But, <laughs> but, like, I'm just, you know what? I'm literally just enjoying my time on the show, to be really honest. I'm, I'm very much let go and let God. Whatever God's got planned next, I'm, I, you know, it's just designed. There's nothing I can do about it, and, I'll, and I embrace it. But right now, I have to admit, I'm having a great time. And Hollyoaks, they treat me so good that I, it's, it's a dream job. So I'm truly happy. And hey, you see the bed sheet, I'm doing all right. That, so. That's right. Now, <laughs> and do you know what? And I will say this. And you know, now, on the real, I'm so proud of you. You know what I mean? You've, Thank you've, you for, you've for, for all of the trials and tribulations and you've come out of the other end, you know what I mean? And you're just a, a, a prime example of success and determination. So I'm proud of you. I, I really well, appreciate you. know, I got love for you. No. But like me and, me and Quincy went through the, the same situation at the same time. So we yeah. know. Right? Yeah. And also, I just want to say, Quincy, hey, hey, hey. You sh are you, you're trilling a lot because I noticed you're looking very cut out there. You look. <laughs> well, you know smart. what? I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, the lockdown, the lockdown. I've had to like you kept me on my toes. You know what I mean? Janelle's been going for hey. your pictures. You've been keeping me on my toes. So. <laughs>
I want to keep on, when Zara opens, I want to keep on hashtag Zara, sponsor the show. I really want <laughs> to be keeping them as Zara tings. You understand what I'm saying? But Rich, on that no, note, man. The arms look hench. Yeah, that's all right, that's all right, yeah. This is twirl and get there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I mean, I mean, uh, lift up the, the set. Let me finish. Oh, <laughs> <dear. laughs> Go to the show. Look, um, Rich, I really appreciate you taking your time out and I wish you all the success. Of course, of course. Uh, do you know what you want to say bye? Likewise, sir. Of course, and hopefully we'll see you again, Richard, on the show. Maybe you can come into the studio next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, you're done. Yeah, no, I'll come down definitely. I, I'll, I'll make sure I'm there. Just save me a little space. Do you know what I mean? I'll be there. Yeah, and yeah, Paul, okay, so. not but love for you. I'll speak Nothing. to you soon, you know that. Yeah, yeah you're in Liverpool. You're up in Liverpool. Yeah. Round of applause. I'm going to come to see you. Yeah. yeah, I'm coming yeah. up there. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Rich, Mr. Salud. Mr. Richard Blackwood, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's, it's been a blast. It's been a blast. Yeah. Uh, have you got some... Uh, it's, it's got a couple of comments. Um, somebody's watching all the way from the USA. Mother Nature's beauty sh uh, soap, actually. So thank you for tuning in from the US. I respect um, We also have quite a few comments about Richard's bedsheets. Some talking about looking at them and some talking about looking like they want to be in them but anyway we'll leave that right there <laughs> um yeah and just that it's been a fantastic show so let me show you yeah uh, you are um going to do a little discount for the, the chocolates yeah. for our viewers mm -hmm. That's so right. just let people know that how can they get a discount obviously mm -hmm. your chocolates go into some of the department stores mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately they, they're shut for for a little while mm -hmm. you know what i mean so if they can't get them in the stores mm -hmm. uh, like selfridges and and so forth, how can I get hold of the chocolates? Well, they come direct to the website, which is paulwaynegregory.com, and we're going to give a 20% discount, and you're going to make up the code. Right. And you got the socials? Yeah, oh, so uh, Paul, PWG underscore chocolates I, on, on everything. That's uh, Instagram, Facebook, a lot. So what I'm going to do for you, uh, mm. I'm going to stick all your socials, all your information, mm. right, uh, when, when the show's finished so people can see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and they get a discount. And yeah. like I said, Paul, uh, I really appreciate you taking your time out. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Uh, for, for coming down and showing me the chocolate and ting and yeah. giving Janelle. Yeah, this yeah. is going to go around in the crew. Thank you for yeah. coming to the studio and giving this one a masterclass. Yeah, uh, yeah. As fun. I say, you know, the crew will polish this off after yeah, the show. Um, so look, yeah. with, uh, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, uh, we've come to the uh, end of the show, uh, end of episode uh, seven. So I'd like to give a round of applause for all of our guests for today's show. Uh, in the studio uh, today, Mr. Paul Gregory, round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. We kicked off the show with Mr. Eddie Nesta, the voice of London. Culture corner with very, very funny comedian, now turned poet, Mr. Sarah Callahan. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give a round of applause for Mr. Richard Blackwood as well. A round of applause for the coach. And my wonderful co-host, always keeps me on my toes, you know, Ray Burnt, ladies and gentlemen, playing us out. Playing us out with one of my favourite tunes from back in the day, a tune I used to sing to all my school teachers to try and get a little pass, right, in maths. Mr. Time Alone and the Extra Timers, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rikissi. Good night. God bless. Thank you very much. Whoa, whoa. Stay here, baby. My darling. Until this burning fire
it's always a pleasure when I am making love with you. You're so fine, baby, won't you?